Well, Nigeria's debt profile has worsened in the first quarter of the year as the country's debt stock rose by 2.04 trillion naira to hit 41.60 trillion naira. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, says government's borrowings are done for capital project execution and that it has the ability to meet its obligations to creditors. President uh, Buhari's administration over the years has been under a series of attacks on the country's rising debt levels. But the government always maintains uh, the debt was within the stipulated ratio based on the country's GDP. However, the International Monetary Fund uh, last week warned that except the federal government put in place adequate measures to improve revenue generation, its entire earnings may be spent servicing debt by the year 2026. And joining us in the studio now to help us understand if Nigeria is indeed broke, as has been uh, peddled in many quarters. Inemeka Obiriri is a financial expert and managing director, Taurus Capital. Good morning and welcome. Thanks. Right. So, is Nigeria broke? Nigeria <laughs> is broke. It's redeemable. We have tried to make this distinction for us. Yes. Um, very, very broke. Uh, if you look at the numbers, you know, I laugh when people try to draw this um, debt to GDP analogy in equating Nigerian economy to that of the other developed economies. Look at the budget performance of 2021. We spent 2.96 trillion naira servicing existing debt. As at the first quarter of 2022, we've already spent 896 billion. If you project it, we'll be spending about 3.56 trillion in 2022 servicing our debt debt services now if you look at that budget it's predicated on a 6.25 trillion naira budget deficit which will require fresh borrowing outside the 40 something trillion that we already have in existence and i look at it critically we have 6.86 trillion naira recurrent expenditure out of this 6.86 trillion 4.11 trillion is supposed to be used to take care of less than 900,000 Nigerians, the political office holders, and the civil servants. Juxtapose this, you will see clearly that if you add 6.86 trillion to the projected 3.56 trillion, we have over 10.3 trillion naira that we're going to be wasting in debt and non-debt recurrent expenditure. In a country based on the past budget performance, that may not generate up to six trillion naira in both oil and non-oil revenue. So critically, anybody telling you that they are borrowing to fund um, capital expenditure is deceiving us because even the accountant general, the new said that clearly we are borrowing to pay salary. If you look at it critically, if our revenue profile based on past budget performances is about 5.5 to 6 trillion, and we're going to be spending 10.3 trillion naira on debt and non-debt recurrent expenditure, not capital projects. That simply means from the day one, we have a four trillion naira deficit on recurrent expenditure that is not on capital projects. This is not sustainable. Is this an error in judgment or is this something that we can blame uh, the system or personalities for? Both the system and the own leadership, let us be very honest. You know, I was discussing with somebody that said Nigeria is like that drunken seller whose father left an asset, a palm plantation, what about 1.8 trillion, 1.8 billion. Rather than go to clay to have it to produce, is that to do a leg by loading buses. That is the kind of let me tell you, this country has huge potentials. Or, or you can say that it's like a, a drunken seller whose father has a plantation of uh, uh, where do where, where, where you drink uh, palm? Is it palm? Palmy, yes. Palmy? Raffia palm. Raffia palm. Yes. The plantation is there. Massive, one thousand hectares. And and with that plantation, rather than sell it, it is drinking the wine. Baby. Just drinking the Just wine. Just drinking the and wine. And then when any tree dies, he allows it to die. God bless then you, sir. Then goes to the next tree, drinks it to God bless you, sir. And then so at the, at the end of the day, he has left. The father gave him a plantation. He has now left it a desert. Exactly. This is a country with huge potential. Let me tell you. It's very simple. 
the 6.8 trillion that we waste on the current expenditure can actually be cut down by 60%. How? Very simple. 4.1 trillion is for the salaries and wages and pensions. The remaining 2. Point something trillion is the profligacy and corruption, travel expenses, newspapers, and whatever that can be cut Medical down. trips. Medical trips. Um, convoy of 1,000 vehicles for those officials that are not supposed to be served. Yeah, for instance, I see, we just, we're just discussing um, the problem with the chief, chief, chief justice right. and so on. One of their problems is actually one of these foreign, foreign trips that, you know, it's like the chief justice goes on his own foreign trip. Where's our own foreign trip? Exactly. <laughs> and you look at it critically. This is an economy that has potentials. Mm. What we have is not... We have two major problems in Nigeria. The issue of atrocious, huge cost of governance and the issue of depleting revenue that can be ramped up. We talk about... The, look at South Africa. South Africa debt to GDP is about 78%. They do know why they are not bothered. Their total re external revenue uh, debt is about $175 billion. But South Africa annual generates about $106 to $110 billion. Less than 55 million population. Look at S Singapore. Look at Dubai. That Arab Emirates. You will see. The problem is not even the debt. What are you borrowing to invest in? Egypt has debt to about 85%. But they are ramping up revenue. Mm. Nigeria has the capacity annually to generate over $200 billion. Even from non-oil revenues. We've done analysis of it. We've done sectoral analysis, sector by sector, from marine time to transportation, to aviation, to agri. Netherlands, 43,000 square kilometers. Half of the year is spent under snow and winter. Nigeria, Niger, Niger, Niger State, has two times the land mass of Netherlands. Benue State, or your, in fact, or your state and Benue State, Ocean and Benue put together, can generate twice what, uh, what Netherlands generates. He said the gold in Zamfara alone can make Zamfara look like, look like Dubai. Exactly. That's what, that, that, that's and, what he said. And the most gold of, in Zamfara alone. And most of I this, hear people are just killing themselves there see, on top of... See, Zampara. I asked this illegal, question. Illegal I asked this question. Why do you think the oil and gas industry upstream is coordinated because of the structure. I gave an illustration. If you bring in a Barat Gold, one of the biggest gold mining companies that has revenue of over ten billion dollars annually, we do the same thing we are doing with oil, with gold and solid minerals. Allocate land to those people that have capacity. I tell you, from the solid mineral alone, we can triple what we made from crude oil. Prime Minister Alano himself once said the other time when we were talking about borrowing, going to China to borrow and so on, he gave a list of so many, so many assets mm -hmm. that we have in this country that if we if we liquidate them, if we sell them, for instance, I drive, I drove past the former building or the Ministry of Communication. I had visited that building in the 90s, early 90s, when, the, when they had not moved from Lagos no, to Abuja. Abuja. You want, no, so not Broad Street. Uh, it's, on the, uh, it's near, um, it's near Obalende. Yes, Obalende. Yeah, there's, there's so many, many of those buildings. Yeah. There's there are so many of them. You look at that structure. That's that's what, what it's what, it's, if you sell that to any corporation, it's what, I'm not sure, if you sell it for 10 billion, you have not sold it. But it is there like waste. And that is the, that is the story of this country. We are like Ajebota. Eh? And a, a, a person who is living like an Ajebota eh? in a poor neighborhood. And we know, and we, and we know <laughs> our condition. Sam, Sam, let me even tell you the most painful one. I was mm. coming to the studio and I saw long queue of cars of waiting course, to buy PMS yes. at K2 Junction. Yes. Now, Sam is a country. Remember that as at 1960s to 1970s, between 1974 to 1979, between Gowon and Obasanjo, he built two brand new refineries. Yes. 1974 to 1979, five years between Gowon and Olusegun and Obasanjo, we built two brand new refineries. Yes. Now, there is no skyrocket size. We had the opportunity in 2016. 
when the market prices crashed, to deregulate, remove the subsidies, open up the market, privatize the refineries. Opa Sanjo did it in 2007. Opa Sanjo was such a very pragmatic man. He understood the way forward. He saw the rot in the system. And before he left, he sold the two refineries to the Blue Star Consortium, mm -hmm. led by Aliko Dangote and Femi Otedola. If that provision had allowed to stand, by now we we'll wouldn't we'll be talking about spending yes, four trillion is. importing white petroleum products. Katuku Ibe in 2016 came and told us clearly, let me come. He said that based on the Zani total they were importing between 47 million to 52 million liters, which is a Ponzi scheme. Katuku Ibe came to power as the Minister for State for Petroleum Resources and the GMD and NPC and told us clearly that our daily consumption was between 28 million to 35 million. And this corroborated what was published by the United States Energy Administration Agency. And we saw it at that level. Sam, tell me, between 2016 till now, the purchasing power of average Nigerian has gone down. Yeah. If you look at the number of cars in Nigeria, 5.6 million mm -hmm. out of 11 is in Lagos State. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now Lagos Absolutely. State consumes about 60%, which has no subsidy. But Sam, we are told from 3.5 million liters, they moved it to 50 million liters, to 73, to 93, to 2 million, million liters. Who are the consumers? Where, where are they? And they will tell you that we are smuggling. Time is not true. Because if you look at the consumption capacities of the neighboring states, from Cameroon to Niger to Chad to Togo to Burkina Faso to Benin Republic, it's about 9.6 million liters a day combined. But there is a leak somewhere. Wait, let me come. Even if you assume DPR told us in February 28, 2020, that our daily consumption is at $8 million, DPR should know better than every other person. Mm. Even if you add the 9.6 million liters consumed, let us even assume without considering that the whole West African country are depending on Nigeria to, for us to smuggle. Mm. Mm. If you add it to the figure submitted by DPR, that simply means we'll have about 42, 43 million liters. Unaccounted for. Well, Sam, where do we... We are, who account, how do we account for the gap between the 102 million liter that NMPC reported and the 42 million liter reality? And do you know the interesting aspect of it? If you look at this from January to April this year, JP Morgan Chase said that we have not paid a dime into the accounts of NMPC. Where is this money going into? And the, let me explain to you what we have here is a clear concerted, deliberate Ponzi scheme at Abuja. And that is why they have refused to privatize the families. That is why they have refused to regulate the market. That is, you can see the, the Ipman people are very angry. Mm. On their own, they have taken the gauntlet to deregulate by themselves. And I don't blame them. As at February 24th, 2022, a liter of the AGO was selling for 248 naira per liter. Today, it is going for 708 naira to 800 naira per liter. And you forgot that even the vessels that bring the product to Nigeria do bond cream, they use this one. Mm. So, freight costs have tripled. Absolutely. And this has nothing to do. See, in Saudi Arabia, a liter of the PMA is selling for 270 naira per liter if you convert the real to naira. AGO is something. Why? Nigeria has a provision of 444, 45,000 barrels of crude oil every day, reserved for NMPC. If we had deregulated in 2016, Remove the subsidy regime when the window provided itself mm -hmm. and, and privatized those refineries. By now, if you remove the freight cost, remove all the ancillary costs associated with importing PMS and AGO, Nigeria will have been booming. I was even getting to that, that you know, all the, all the options that you have given us now appear to be uh, long term. And now we are in dire straits now. You've said that, okay, Nigeria's situation is redeemable. But, but then let us also do another post-mortem of how we get to where we are now. This debts of obviously get approved by the legislators. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering how, how, how did, how, what do they have to say about this? They should, you know, take some form of responsibility or did they miss something somewhere? I am sorry to use this word. Nigeria has two tribes. The tribe of the impoverished 199 million masses and the tribe of the political elites. Don't get it wrong. They are all the same. They always bring in religion and ethnicity when they want to play policy games among the citizens. Yes. <laughs> These guys in the National Assembly, there was a TI report that clearly stated, it is a, a, a report out there 98% of those in the executive arm of government across all levels are very corrupt. 96% of the legislative arm across all levels 
are very corrupt. Sixty-five percent of the judiciary. So these are these guys know what to do. But I can tell you, by shaking the system, we prevent them from the rent-seeking environment that they thrive upon. You know, I feel so saddened looking at a country. See, Nigeria has no business being where we where are we today. Are. We have no business housing the most extreme people in the whole world. In 1980, China had 765 million extreme people. Nigeria had only about 4.1 million. Today, China has been able to take out over 700, 676 million people. From the extra, as of 1980, Nigeria had a per capita GDP more than China. China, yeah. There is no skyrocket science about this. All we need is to put in place the right legislative, monetary, and fiscal policy framework, the right constitutional framework, We're and the right people that are patriots. See, it's one thing. You see, you don't even need to have extent knowledge to rebuild Nigeria. We have a very resilient population. Between you and Sam, I'm telling you, if we pick anybody here, even in your studio, who is very patriotic, Mourinho is one of the most decorated coaches. He never plays football. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. able to be able to assemble the right people. He, his strength of his managerial career is on beauty, working with strong and ad, ad, athletic players. And he looked for, towards Africa. That was how he discovered people like Didier Drogba. And they gave him trophies. People like Alex Ferguson never played football to the highest level. But you saw what he did with Manchester United. What we need in Nigeria are petroids at all levels. And I tell you, they can actually make money in government without Allah subjecting each and every one of us to the kind of rubbish we are having today. It's because we have a bazaar of an economy. As Buhari said, that if we do not destroy corruption, corruption will destroy us. Under his eyes, we are seeing all of these things happen. But I still want you to, to explain this disparity you talked about the PMS, about the consumption, that is it not an auditor's work? If you want to do it, how does an auditor now break it down and dissect and say this is how we have come with these figures and where has all that money gone? Sam, who is auditing who? <laughs> when we are told that the accountant general of the Federation Stole sold 80 billion, billion. <laughs> And by the time you even investigate the general and every other person, see, Sam, what we are having here is an elitist gangsterism. It's just like what we have in the Supreme Court, where it's, the justices are accusing the chief justice of corruption. So, so who will bear the cat? Sam, the, <laughs> see, see, Sam, see, I, I, I have hope in Nigeria. You know, despite what we are experiencing now, there is hope in the world. Let me tell you, we can't continue this way. And that is the truth. You ask yourself this question. I said, Sam, in 2016, that was when we experienced our first recession. An audit was conducted by a city minister of state. Kachuku Ibe is one of the brightest brain oil and gas industry, no matter what anybody may say. And we saw the figure. And this figure, let me tell you, most of the people that export these products to Nigeria, from Glencore to Trafigora to Vito, all of them file their returns. They show volume that they export to every country. If you look at the record of the, if you go through the record of the United States Energy Agency, they have a record of every white petroleum product that goes to each country of the whole world. Nigerian daily consumption can be at max 38 to 42 million liters a day. Lagos consumes 60%. Sam, go to every of the filling stations. You, it's a very simple yeah, audit. Do, do, do a simple then, audit. See, DPR. See, so how come somebody is telling us that a same government that filed a report that we that the, the 47 million to 52 million designer report was sponsored? Of course, the House of Rep Committee report showed clear there were many vessels that said they brought product they didn't bring product. Most of them are still in EFCC. And all of a sudden, the same country. So what they are doing is that they are saying that they brought, they, they tell us fiction, and they, from fiction they draw, they draw the reality of Nigerian money. The former, CB, uh, the who, former, who is collecting the, the former money? CBN governor. Yes. Very honourable Emia Sanusi Lamido Sanusi said mm. to us that any time you see why they refuse to remove subsidy, mm. that any time you see the price of crude oil going up, that is when they expend their dragnet to steal from Nigeria. Sam. 
Nigeria has never consumed more than 50 million liters a day. But these disparities, um, I'm sorry, I, I still need to stress this point. These disparities are yawning. These are not, these are not, you know, a little here, a little there. Who these will are, investigate who? This is, this is, this is huge. The National Assembly and how much, is and, and, compromised. And if corruption is, you know, the, the sole culprit now, or the chief culprit now, how much can one amass, or how much can this cartel amass uh, to, to themselves? You see, the level of kleptomania in Nigeria is mind-boggling. It's demonic. I begin to wonder, do these guys live in the moon? Let me even tell you something. Nigeria is not the only corrupt nation, but there is something I've just discovered about Nigeria. In other climes, there is no country you will go to, you say they are a country of sense. Even in the West, even in America, in the US, there is, in the UK, there is corruption. But do you know the most pervasive aspect of it? It is very destructive corruption. If you go to Bahana Island now, Go to Maitama, go to Asukuro. You see high rise. Go to even Bordelon and all those high rises. Most of this, 90% of real estate development are a place of corruption. They built it, they lock it. Because that's the only way they can launder those monies. And we can checkmate it if we want to checkmate it. I said it very clearly. If we want to checkmate corruption, if we even need to invite, invite people. Make a law. Make sure that every land registration, every property acquisition is backed with BVN. You must not, if you want to register your land in Lagos, you must include your BVN. Put it in the law. There you can track those who are using fraud to steal our money. And do. See, You're still looking at systems. Is it, let but me Nigerian say, system, it's not the system. Sam, is it Sam, the system that is the problem of the people? Sam, it's not just the people. It's the system and leadership. If you put a whistleblowing act in place. that Don't we have that? No, it's not legislated. Where it is compulsory that, well, first of all, Every public office holder must declare their assets and liabilities. Public. It's not that I'll file it with CCB. Publish it publicly. Let us see what. In fact, create a portal. We are before. It's in the stock exchange. Once a company goes public, you don't have any right to hide your financials. Every quarter you produce it. Make it open a portal where every public office holder, politically exposed person, and their relatives publish their annual, quarterly asset liability declaration. Open so people can verify it. And then the whistleblowing act, not something let me finish, must make provision for 20%. If anybody or group of persons blow the whistle and the assets are successfully recovered, they will have 20%. Of course, that's should be penalty for those that blow false whistle. Let me tell you. The policeman or the DSS guy that you will give 10 million to hush up. We know clear that if you have one billion naira asset stolen, that if he recovers it, he gets two hundred million. In fact, even bribing him is because if you bribe him, he won't bribe the SS. The SS guy will open it. Are you sure? Mm. All the people, even the person who is a whistleblower, will not be bribed eventually. It becomes a racket. You do a whistleblow. Yeah, I blow, I blow your, I blow your whistle. Then I collect. I bring the money back. Sam, eh? Sam. And then the DSS bar is but, also corrupted. But it becomes is, another racket. Sam, but, eh? but he is a very simple, it's a very simple <laughs> thing. If you, if you know that going through the stress of stealing one billion, eh? you steal that one billion. Yes. Let me tell you, if the law is active, yeah. The whistleblowing act is enshrined. Twenty percent yeah. of it, whatever, whatever you say, you if it has a very big yes, <laughs> no, but they won't put this. It they know what the, to it do. It depends but on I, the human being. I, I beg to disagree, though, because, <laughs> because I, I would I would rather you know believe that we have these laws. Of course, laws you, can talk, you, can, you can talk about the political the will, are not but no. but but don't we have enough of this of these laws? Even if we follow the existing CCB arrangement, come declare your assets. If we if we follow that, we can at least get somewhere. But I'm even looking. Man, it's not made, it's not made the, public. The, the only person in Nigeria, right. living or dead, who has openly done the same thing we're talking about is the good man Yadwa. Yadwa came to power, declared his assets, it was something million, with his wife, and published it. Yes, he did. For the whole world to see. You see. But he couldn't enforce it for the do country. We, do you even know that even the politicians do what we call pre preemptive declaration of what they want to see? Mm. Yes, now. Nah. Uh, so there was, there was a particular so man who, who, who declared who declared his, who, who declared what he had before he stole it. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. So, 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 so I called him. He was open. a prophet of his own prosperity. <laughs> but but in, in all your hopes now, uh, do, do you really see that coming anytime soon where we would have this, you know, policy 
transfer, so to speak. An incoming government comes with its own policies. I mean, look at the the, the, the battles that um, Zainab Ahmed has had to, you know, to, to face, and even the blames she has also incurred in, in, in her policy thrust. At a point, she was even defending for a long time, defending her debt uh, profile, and then all of a sudden, it seems to be like a tacit um, admission, so to speak, that this is unsustainable let now. Me, let, me, let me tell you the truth. Let us face fact. The problem we have is putting square holes, square, square pegs around the holes. A Wale do as Minister for Finance will take a different direction. Let us stop painting things. If you advise the government that you're working with and they don't listen to you, you resign. There is no need hiding and making excuses. Nigerian debt, you know, she is you know, the one that will tell us about debt to GTB. We should be looking at debt to revenue. If South Africa decide that all things holding equal, they want to pay up their debt. In a year and a half, they will pay off all their external debts. If Nigeria decides today that we're going to shut down government and we're just going to depend on our revenue, in seven and a half years, we will not pay off our external debts. It will have 10 times more capacity than South Africa and Egypt. Okay, is it ripe or is it even um, you know, possible now to consider debt forgiveness or some form of debt relief in all of these huge piles of debt? You think, we have? You think the world... China or the lenders mm. are foolish. Mm. They are not foolish. Now let me see. In 1990, when I talk, in 19, see everything about political will. In 1999, when Obasanjo took over power, Nigeria was a barrier nation. Abacha destroyed this country so that said that nobody wanted to touch us. Our external debt was almost about 32 billion. Our foreign reserve was down to about 3.2 billion dollars, which even claimable that have not even been applied to it. Oil was selling at. $17.34 dollars per barrel. You may have whatever you like. Olusegun no Obasanjo went to work. Somebody told me that he flew with him in British Airways for six hours. The man was with him. He wasn't sleeping. Other younger men were sleeping. In eight years, the man paid off our external debt. Most of the reforms we have today, from GSM to EFCC to ICPC to everything, was born by Olusegun Obasanjo. He left power, leaving a reserve of $47 billion. Yeah, Adua came up and took over and grew the economy to about 8%. Before that smile, up prepared smiling one called not and took over. He wasn't prepared for governance. <laughs> and from 2010 till now, Nigeria had been from one hot part, hot, hot part of hell to another. <laughs> see, if Yeah Adua had not died, I bet you, and we had followed that trajectory, this country would have been different from where we are today. The problem we have is that we hand over power to unprepared people. Governance is not about being nice. At all. It's not about being the good boy. Exactly. You must have to take the hard decisions. If you have a company today, go to GTB, go to Zenit, go to Shell. When they want to employ you, even if the MD is your brother, if you don't meet the minimum Results. job requirement and key performance indicators, mm. they won't employ you. But the here nepotism, religious jingoism, and as I used to put it, has destroyed this country. And we need to press the reset button. I tell you, this country has potentials. Saudi Arabia is a very huge position nation. But Saudi Arabia... In 2001, they decided to go into debt palm production. Over the last 8, 13 years, they've done about 900,000 hectares of debt. The north is desertified. If the north decide today to go to debt, and the north of Nigeria is the only place where debt can grow twice in a year, around the whole world. If we do 1 million hectares of debt palm production, the north can get about $28 billion, sustainable over the next 70 years. More than what we see from crude. But nobody's looking at that. The palm oil is sustained in Nigeria. Every, every local government in Nigeria, there's a mineral resource. Huge! There's a mineral resource. Huge! At least one mineral resource in every local government in Nigeria. Huge! But Look at the many, southeast. How many are we tapping? In 1964, uh, the economy of the old East of Nigeria was the fastest growing in the whole of the Commonwealth. As at 1964-65, we controlled 45% of the global crude palm oil market. Today, that market is $112 billion. If we have sustained that trajectory, Nigeria will be exporting over $45 billion from crude oil. Today, Malaysia and Indonesia, that came to Calabar decades ago to, to pick settlers, mm -hmm. are controlling it. Indonesia have even put a freeze on the export of crude oil. Nigeria consumes 2.4 million tons per annum. We only produce about 1 million. Trend. Financial and expert in Emeka Obiriri is uh, still here uh, with us to help dissect this thorny issue and uh, what uh, Nigeria stands to gain 
if we take a different route. Okay, so um, let's look at the uh, agricultural strides now. The uh, current and exiting administration rode on you know, diversifying the economy, so to speak. But then people have said, how has the agricultural sector fared? Of course, not excusing the insecurity, the impact of insecurity uh, in this uh, subsector. Let me explain to you. Even the agri can be used to curb insecurity if we are very sincere. I'll give you an example. You know, the problem we have in Nigeria is that there's always a mismatch between the monetary policy and the fiscal policies. The Central Bank of Nigeria, for good reasons, provided a 32 billion naira fund to develop the palm oil sector. Like I explained before we went on break. Right. right. As at 1964 uh, 65, Nigeria controlled for the of the good palm oil market, good CPO market. Today, we import almost 60% of what we consume. It's an aberration. We have the land, low technology. We have the human capital. The other day, you saw the governors of Abia State, Inugu and Imo State, lamenting that bandits have taken over the forest. The, in the forest. Southeast. The south is one of the smallest regions in Nigeria. In fact, Oyo is even bigger than the whole of the southeast in terms of land mass. So, if the full land, if the ter terrorist men or the bandits from wherever they may come from are destroying land mass areas like Niger that has a distance square kilometer, what of the little southeast? To insist that you can cover the whole of the southeast driving around it in a day twice. What stopped the governor? CBM provided funds. We did a proposal to them, very simple. In the southeast, in my, let me give you some, my state, Imo State, we have 651 autonomous communities. Land in the southeast are communally owned mostly because there is paucity of land. Very simple. The forest that the terrorists are occupying, or the unknown government, or the ESN, are there to be taken to develop and add value. We don't even need to go far. Cashew palm oil. I said, if you ask every community under the CBA intervention window, give me 30 hectares of land. Clear it yourself. The Tenera super gene species of the Malaysian species, we might do it in Calabar, are available everywhere for less than one thousand naira per tree. You decide in every community, 30 hectares, clear it. There are many private store investors who are willing to co-locate cottage factories to process the palm oil and palm canal oil. If Imo State does 30 hectares, 60 hectares per community, in three years, we will develop 10,000 hectares of new palm plantation. You're talking of mm. three years. I, 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 said, no, I said producing. No, that's for an oil. No, no, that's for no, oil no, what palm. I'm saying is that you're talking of three years. When I can, I can easily go and uh, capture a priest and take 100 million for him, why do I need to... Why do I need to wait for three yeah. years to make uh, 10,000 naira profit? They, they, claim that those, can make... they claim that those capturing the priests are, are in, in... They are there, they are looking at us. They are invading... No, they say, that, they say they are invading army. So how do you stop them? If you put in 30, 60 hectares in every community, each hectare employing two youths, 120 youths, even if you turn them into vigilante with chakabun, gone, chakabula, and they are there in the forest, taking care of their palm tree, doing the legumes like the watermelon that can give them mo money. In, a, in three years, 36 months, each hectare will produce about 1.8 million naira in revenue, just selling the nuts. In a year, the state will be earning extra 28 to 32 billion naira from the palm alone. And every state can replicate it. It's not going to cost the state anything. Just provide the goodwill, provide the fiscal direction, provide security, provide direction. But they are not doing it. Everybody is waiting. In the north, the debt palm. If the 15 core northern states had to do 100,000 hectares of debt palm, which will help to call the certification, All right. they can make as much as 28 to 30 billion dollars annually. Okay. The Southeast can make about $5 billion annually from the crude oil market. The South Side, the Southwest. But these governors do not care. Everything all right. Talks, Everybody goes to Abuja. Away. Everything all right. boils all right. down to we'll, what you have said, that it is not, it's not a question of, of uh, whether we cannot do it or we don't have the potential. All right. But that okay. we are not ready to do it yet. Yeah. All right. But, but you, you remain the hopeful and um, we will um, rest on that optimism. Enemeka Oberiri, thank you so much for your uh, valuable insights on thank the program you. Thanks, today. Thanks, thank you.